The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the disability meeting for July 2020. I'm just going to call the rolls. Representing the PBA. Going live. PBA is represented by Joe Alejandro. All right. PBA. Represented by Kenny Sparks. SBA. Anthony Borelli. LBA. Lou Turco. CBA. Chris Monahan. Hmm. Commissioner of Finance. Bill Dukes for Finance Commissioner Jacques Deha. Representing the mayor. Uh, Cynthia Collins designate for Mayor Bill de Blasio. Somebody needs to turn off their blender. That was uh, Suzanne, if you can hear us, that was I've just muted you. Yeah, but I need her to answer, right? So I oh. just called her representing the controller. Susanna Vickers, designee for controller Scott Stringer. John, do us an uh, alternate uh, designee for controller Scott Stringer. And representing the police commissioner, Stephanie Zimber for Commissioner Shea. Uh, representing the law department. <coughs> representing the law department. Not representing the actuary. Hello? Yeah, okay, so Sherry Chan, present by invitation. Okay, uh, uh, Nat, we do have you on there, right? Wait, she, she won't be able to respond. Okay, just make sure she's got everything. Annette, if you could just send me a text, I know you'll be able to hear me just to confirm you're good. Yeah, yeah, it was just Annette, uh, try to speak. We might be able to hear you now. Oh, yeah, she says we're good. Yes. All right, Joe, we're good. Thank you, Annette. Joe, we have a quorum. Okay, we ready? ready? That's the time that you're trying to get on, for the record. Okay, but we need Dr. Ponder really to be executive, yeah. so I'm saying three, four, seven. All right, Joe. Okay. All right. Uh, page one to accept the minutes of the previous meeting, Wednesday, June 10th, 2020, and to confirm the next meeting date, Wednesday, August 12th, 2020. Wow. Right? Um, article uh, Article Two, pages two through seven. Two through ten, Joe. Nothing of a, of a controversial nature. We'll so move it. I think we have a, a safeguards issue. Yes. Seven. Yes, we do. We'll just so move that too. Uh, or do we need a discussion of that? If you're if you're, if you're oh. comfortable sending it back to the medical board, we don't need to do a. Um, a discussion as long as the medical board will get all the records, but further discussion should be held. In the hey, so I'm not comfortable with sending it back. I would like to have a discussion. We're actually being presented with this information today, so we'd like to have a discussion about it. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll just move pages two through seven right now. Uh, so move two through seven. All right. Page eight through eleven. Request for reexamination under the safeguards provision of administrative code. 13-254 for retired detective Tom Stacken. Hey Joe, we've got it. We had an amendment to the public this morning uh, on transfer for funds. So that encompasses pages two through ten and then pages eleven through twelve of the safeguards provision. So we will so move two through ten. Sorry about that, Joe. Yeah. All right, so eight, eight and ten were added to uh the, uh, nine and the ten. funds. Right. They were added to all nine and ten, right. So, right. so we'll discuss in the second session. 
All right. So now I don't know what pages then you'd have to uh, fix that pages. Uh, 13 through the, 17 is the COVID resolution. All right. 13 through 17 is the COVID. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, pages 11 through 12. 11 and 12 are the safeguards provision. That's correct. Okay. okay. So pages 11 and 12. Uh, regarding the safeguards provision uh, request that I just mentioned. And we're going to move that into the executive session. And that will be moved into executive. Okay. All right. Pages 13 through 17 regarding the resolution on COVID-19. So I have a, a question about um, item 4B. Um, I know we had briefly discussed it, I think, at the SIM last time. Um, it says that the NYPD must verify in the UF 49 that the deceased member or eligible retiree reported in person to a location that was not their home or residence was directed by the NYPD on or after March 1st, 2020. Um, I had suggested then that it should come from the Office of the Chief of Personnel. Um, and not just the CO, all, all um, employment issues come from the chief of personnel. I also checked with NICER and um, they verify that information through the chief of personnel through a deputy director. Um, so I think that if we have the language that is necessary and um, chief of personnel's office can fill in the blanks with the dates and what have you, this can be done expeditiously. I don't because I do think that we want to get this moving, that if I get the names today, I will make sure that they're sent over to the chief of personnel um, so that they can immediately start working on it. I would just want the exact language that the pension fund wants to uh, need to, to um, move this forward. Any, any comments? Well, the only comments I had, this is Nick Safuni, only that we were looking for expediency uh, and we figured the member's command might allow that to occur, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more quickly. So, uh, I don't know, Chris McGrath, did you have any, have any ideas on that or comments on that? I mean, I would just say that we're looking to move it quickly too. A CO doesn't have um, authority to speak on behalf of the NYPD. Absolutely, they do. They speak all the time. Community council meetings. Every day they speak to the NYPD. Well, News not, conferences. I'm not no, on this issue. Okay. I'm not saying on this issue. Okay. But you didn't okay, say then this I, I stand corrected. But that, that no, is I'm, not my understanding. Why are you attacking my members? I am not attacking your members. Constantly, every, every month we come here. Every month we come here. I take offense at that. No, every month. I take offense at that. We speak on behalf of the NYPD right this second speaking on behalf of the NYPD. Can we call this, guys? I mean, Stephanie, we do, have it, we do have it happen all the time where we have the CO of the medical division speaking under the authority of the PC, speaking on behalf of the police department. We have COs speaking on behalf of the department all the time. We're just looking for expediency and rather than the cumbersome nature of having to go from the uh, you know one PP to the individual commands to time records, we just thought it would be a lot smoother, a lot cleaner, and something certainly that could be you know could be verified. We do it here. We rely on many reports from COs and from ICOs and from supervisors at this board. Uh, I, I was just going to say for correction, um, also <laughs> just for clarification, members of the service at the rank of police officer are being asked to go to community meetings without the commanding officer there and they're also speaking on behalf of the department at these community meetings am i correct uh chris uh, absolutely that was all part of the nco strat uh, yes, no. structure in any event the um um the commanding officer of the medical division is part of chief personnel's office um this information should come from the chief personnel's office and if you want to work to get uh, 49 from the from the members uh, CO and send it there, I would have no problems. But it should come from the chief of personnel's office. 
and then said, I will work to expedite it. You want to take a caucus? Guys? I, I think we need to caucus and uh, regarding that. Question. Uh, Can I just ask a question before we caucus? Is the similar sure. policy on the other boards where they're taking this additional step to verify or is it just us yet again? The, um, yeah, this is Cindy. Um, it is uh, the policy. In fact, this is the the policy the NICERS will follow. They they have perhaps uh, all, up to 300 members who have been affected and passed away from COVID. Uh, I think they're even facing a much larger number. My understanding is uh, the police department has unfortunately lost eight members, which is a much smaller number. But the NICERS is going through the same process. They will be going through the chief of personnel to have the verification done in terms of duty, status, and time. So this is consistent with what the other boards are doing. Teachers has a verification process as well. Uh, however, they don't have, I'm not sure that they've had any uh, uh, members, civilian members of the service uh, pass away uh, in their membership, and I don't have any knowledge of um, who has passed away or what uh, BERS is doing. But my understanding is, uh, given that this is uh, the ultimate presumptive bill, we just uh, the thought is to have some uh, some method in there, just a, a verification process that is consistent across the board. So this is not just for police. It's uh, all the boards are trying to implement a similar uh, process. And that's why most of the uh, resolutions um, are, uh, are very similar. I can say that at FIRE, uh, this has not come to the board yet. They've had no members of the service that have passed away. So it's not as exigent for them. Uh, they've had EMS and other civilian workers pass away, but no actual active firefighters pass away. So, so you just did a representation no. that said that the chief of personnel at NICERS no, I said the, would make the, that. Uh, the office of the chief of. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. The office of the chief of personnel they designated a deputy director to, to handle that. But it is the. So wait, so I have a question. I have a question, Stephanie. I'm looking at the NICERS resolution, Joe. I'm looking at the NICERS resolution, which was provided to us. And there's no language to what Cindy or what Stephanie, what you folks are mentioning right now. It just says, as provided in the law, the agency report must verify that the members, that the deceased member or eligible retiree reported in person to their usual place of public employment at the direction of the member's public employee after March 1st, 2020. So it doesn't say anything about who, it just speaks about a specific report, an agency report. It's not saying anything about a chief of personnel or any specific designee that's required to do it. It's just saying the employer. Our idea was to take this same language, which has already been okayed by you folks sitting on these other boards and just no, emulate I, it. I, no, let me correct you, Nick. It has not been approved yet at NICERS. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I thought it was something that was in the works over there and that you guys already approved it. My apologies. It is in the works and the way I described it is the way it's going to be administratively handled. We've been trying to be transparent about this. I'm not, you know, I, I, I don't want to get in the weeds there. Uh, as in NICERS, they're going to have a form uh, similar. I think Kevin is going to be drafting a form and we're taking it on uh, good faith that Kevin uh, is going to be drafting the form consistent with the, you know, with the language in the resolution. Uh, you know. Well, that's a good point uh, then. So if, so if we're breaking the ground here, the first sort of fund that's going to be yeah. putting a resolution together, then I don't see where we have to necessarily, you know, um, follow suit. But, but then you make a good point, Cindy, which is if a report is being prepared, back to what Chris Monahan was saying, back to what Joe was saying, is if we're going to have an agency report, it certainly can be verified very quickly at the member's command without going through the cumbersome steps and channels. I know. Uh, and that's what we're asking for. It's, you know, this bill was passed in May. we just like to get it implemented to get our families um, sort of on the right foot here financially, which is what the purpose of the bill was. And, and Nick, one of the things... Well, but we also know that the, we want to avoid any type. Nick, we think that the step of having... Uh, the chief of personnel verify it and 
and they're prepared to do it expeditiously. It's not going to have any create any delay. Is uh, in a bill which has requires so little. This is not anything that's going to delay getting benefits out to the family members, and it's going to really protect the fund and the integrity of the fund, and protect the uh, the benefits to people that are entitled to them and should get them and the family members need them because the this has been a horrible experience for all of us here in the city uh but so this is a I, minor I this that. is just a minor can i can i ask one question uh, i I, I'm, I think we're getting bogged down a little much here to add an extra step when it's not even addressed in that sense it seems like the way the way I'm reading this is that a commanding officer in a precinct doesn't seem to have the ability to speak on the employment status of someone within their own command, but the chief of personnel can do so. And I don't understand why there's such a, uh, 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 I guess, a giant leap to go all the way downtown to 1PP to have the chief of personnel do this when a commanding officer can do it just as well. I don't, I don't get it. So I just why, why suddenly there's this push? Can we just do hold on, hold on a second. Yeah. You know, once again, NICE covers a lot of other agencies, a lot smaller than us. So when you get a small agency, obviously the the higher rank structure of well, that gets involved in employment issues. We're we're a very large agency. Um, most of the work is dictated to the precinct COs, the borough inspectors. I just think it's absurd that Cynthia and Stephanie do not trust a precinct CO who is appointed, given the command by the police commissioner. Most, most of them have been promoted once, twice, by the sole discretion of the police commissioner. And you, the mayor's office, and the police commissioner don't trust their people. This is going to come up later, in, later in, the, in the case that basically Cynthia is going to vote that they that the, this site was a sergeant. A sergeant wasn't working when the line of duty happened. We have four inspectors signing on that. The police commissioner is sitting here going, I don't trust my people. They give misleading statements. They're lies. They have no integrity. Time and time again, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Time and time again. I'm not letting, I'm not letting I, my members get beat up anymore. It's not happening. I think the issue with everything that's not the, um, that's not the way. I can't hear you, Stephanie. Yeah. You're going to speak into the mic. I, don't, I take issue with everything that you said. That's not the case. I would also point out that I did communicate with the general counsel for NICERS, and it was she um, and her chief operations officer who told me that it was going to be uh, a designating uh, deputy director in uh, office of chief of personnel to do that verification. We're, we're not NICERS. We're not nice. And let's get back to the statute, which is controlling here. The statute doesn't really require this extra step that you're implementing or suggesting here. The statute just requires that the person work on uh, on or after March 1st, 2020. So I think we're getting we're creating you know too much of a cumbersome task here that wasn't required or. or or thought of when they were putting the statute together. It's just whether or not the member reported to work on or after March 1st. I don't think we have to make it more complicated than the statute. Or or make it a higher standard than the statute requires. I, I'm just I'm just again I just um I'm I'm perplexed as to why an additional step, in my opinion, to now, we've already said the member has to be verified as, as in a sense as being, it says here that they reported in person to their usual place of public employment at the direction of the member's public employer. Who better to say that than the, the commanding officer? They're not gonna send anyone out there that's not employed by the police department. It's illegal. <laughs> so I don't get that. So here's his, here you're saying, oh, no, no, we don't trust the commanding officer of the command to opine on that. No, we have to get a letter or some sort of verification from the chief of personnel. Let me see. Commanding officer of a precinct, inspectors, inspectors, chief, chief, highest chief of personnel. We've got over several layers to get to 
determine that a member of the service working out of a command was 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 there i i i don't i'm just flabbergasted that it seems like there's this shifting standard that it's okay the commanding officer will rely on when they uh, sign a line of duty form but we can't rely on them to say that the member was actually employed for the police department and doing police department work when they were when they uh, 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 succumbed to COVID-19. This is unbelievable. Who came up with this? I just need to know, because I think at the end, I'm just shocked, shocked that people in the police department don't seem to want to trust the commanding officers who, who are given such great power over the areas in which they are, are instructed to handle. I don't understand this. We can't trust them to do this. That's not what we're saying. So I need to know who, who's that's authorizing this. That's not what they're saying. That's not that's, what they're saying. And that's not what the, the reason for Stephanie, this. Stephanie, you can say it all day. It's not what you say, it's what you do. That's what actually comes to my, I've been taught that all my whole life. You can say a lot of things, but it's what you do. And what you're arguing now makes no, doesn't pass the smell test. Well, I disagree with you. Um, but like I'm sure you do. I'm shocked at that too. Shocked. So this is so this is Cindy. I just want to make it uh, very clear that uh, the mayor's office is very much wants to make sure these benefits are paid out and that they're paid out. Doesn't uh, seem it. Uh, Doesn't let, seem let, let me finish, Joe. Let me finish. The Doesn't police so. commissioner had said they wanted this. But uh, given uh, the discussion and uh, the uh, the posture um, of you guys, I do not want to get to a situation where uh, we're at a deadlock on this issue. It's more important to the mayor's office that the families of the service officers who passed away doing and protecting the members of the citizens of uh, New York City are uh, are taken care of and that's what this bill was about uh we tried to have some reasonable uh measures in it but at this point uh the mayor's office um is uh is satisfied with the resolution as it stands and uh will trust that kevin will implement appropriate uh administrative rules to have uh to pay out the benefits to those uh uh, beneficiary and those remaining family members who lost their loved ones. Thank you, Cindy. With that statement, Thank you, Cindy. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay, so moved, right? We got all so moved. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, that ends the uh, public agenda, and I make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Okay. Get a sign out and sign back in. Right? Yep. Everybody knows that to sign out and sign back in, right? Yep.